this is Mike with aviary.com and today we're just going to go over the basic setup and use of gradients in the applications. So basically a gradient is a color field or object that blends two or more colors together. Um, aviary can handle up to 10 individual colors in a gradient and it's quite useful to add depth and polish to your images. So most of this will be done in Phoenix, but the basic setup is the same for Peacock and Raven. So to find the gradient tool in Phoenix, just click on the paint bucket icon and choose the gradient fill tool, which is the rainbow icon there. Uh, click it and it will open the properties menu. So let's just drag the property menu here to the center and take a look at that. So in the gradient tools properties, in the center is a color bar and it is a preview of the gradient. And underneath this color bar are two triangle icons, which are called color stops. And they represent the individual colors that make up a gradient. Um, these color stops can be moved horizontally along the color bar, changing the ratio of the colors that are blended in the gradient. So moving them close together will create a short spread to your gradient, while moving them far apart will create a smooth transition in your gradient. So by default, Aviary will produce a black and white gradient to start off with. But say you want to add color to your gradient. That's easy. We'll just add another color stop. To add a color stop, double click under the color bar and you'll get another color stop icon which can be moved along like the other icons to change the ratio. Um, double clicking on it will bring up your color picker menu. And let's pick a nice golden yellow color here. And you'll see it updated in real time in, on the color bar. So it can be moved just like the other ones to change the ratio. So let's add a extra color stop here and let's make it an orange color. So say you have a color in your gradient you want to remove. That's easy. Just click on the color stop that you want to remove, drag it away from the color bar, and release the mouse button. And it will be removed from your gradient. Now let's add that back in. So double click under the color bar to add a color stop. Double click the color stop to bring up the color picker window. And let's pick that orange color again here. Oh uh, yeah, the orange color. And click OK. And it'll be updated in your color bar. Let's drag the properties off of our image here and add a gradient to it. So to add a gradient to an image, click your mouse to set a start point. While holding the mouse button, drag a line and when you release, it'll set the end point. As you can see here, uh, it matches our gradient that we set in our color bar there. It starts with the white on the left where the start point was and ends in the black uh, where our end point was. And the gradient transitions in between those two points. Now, depending on which angle you draw this line, you can rotate your gradient around. As you can see here, and how long you draw this line will determine how quickly your, tra your transition of colors in your gradient to happen. So a really short line will make a really small gradient. While if we draw across the canvas, creating a very long line, it will be a nice smooth gradient. So what we've drawn here is a linear gradient, meaning that the colors transition in one direction starting from your beginning color to your end color transitioning through all the intermediate colors. Avery has a different type of uh, gradient called a radial gradient um, and it's added to the canvas the same way. As you can see here the color radiates out from the center point or the start point to the edge where you release the mouse. Now you can change the shape of this radial gradient by just the angle you draw your gradient line out with. So we can make um, elliptical shapes or if you draw at a 45 degree angle, you can create almost perfect circle. So the next setting here is the spread method. And the spread is really just how aviary handles the colors beyond the start and end points. So let's switch back to a linear gradient here. We'll draw a short one onto the canvas. Now this is the default spread mode called pad, which the end colors are continued out to the edges of the canvas, so the white continues and the black continues. The next spread mode is called Reflect, so we'll draw another short linear gradient here, and as you can see, 
the color is mirrored uh, in the extended regions. And so the last one is repeat. And we'll draw, we'll set that and draw another linear gradient here. And as you can see, the gradient just repeats over and over again, creating kind of a sawtooth pattern. But that really depends on what colors you have set in your gradient. So there's one last feature that I'd like to go over, uh, but it's only in Raven and Peacock. So let's switch over to Raven. So here in Raven, I'm just going to draw a rectangle onto the canvas, and let's fill it with a radial gradient similar to the one we had in Phoenix. So as you can see here in the properties bar, we have the color bar with the color stops underneath and the spread method. But there is a one last setting here called focal. And this only works for the radial gradient. It won't show up with the linear gradient. So let's move this all the way to one. See what happens. So you can see the center of the radial gradient has been shifted over to one side, but yet the halo or the endpoints are exactly where they were. This is really good for creating shading, dynamic shading, glossiness, and that kind of stuff to your objects. So that's basically gradients in a nutshell. Um, we just really skimmed the surface of it. So I suggest um, go out there, experiment, play with the settings, see what you can coax from these tools. They're quite powerful. You just gotta dip your feet in, get them wet, and really see what's out there. Thanks.